everyone, today I'm going to be covering a preliminary exam question. So the one highlighted on my screen you guys can see, this one's specific to the biology course. However, the step-by-step -step process I go through today can be applied to any short answer or extended response question for any subject. So keep watching. So the question on the left hand side of my screen reads, evaluate the impact of environmental changes on the evolution of extinct Australian flora and fauna. Those of you who are familiar with the syllabus would have a general idea of where this comes from. Step number one is to have an idea of exactly where the question comes from in the syllabus. That way you'll be able to include specific content from that area and then that will help you in getting full marks. So I'll just pull up where this comes from in the syllabus. This question is specifically from module four. Those of you who have done year 11 biology should know module four is called ecosystem dynamics. This part is especially inquiry question number two. So we're not covering the entirety of module four in this question, just a specific part of that. Even with the inquiry question, it's not the whole inquiry question. The area we're going to be focusing on is mainly this area over here. The one that's asking us to look at previous Australian animals and how they've evolved into today's animals, which are small mammals and sclerophyll plants. So this is essentially the evidence we'll be using in our question. So now we know where in the syllabus this comes from. Step number two is to look at the verb of the question. So just flipping to the left hand side over here. The verb that's been given to us is evaluate. So Nessa puts out a list of key verbs that you guys need to know. When we go to that list, we'll see that evaluate means to provide judgment, essentially. So I'll just drop that down above the question. By looking at the verb, you guys will be able to know what the question is asking of you and then specifically answer it. So, for example, um, evaluate is different to an explain question. Evaluate, you need to give reasons to actually show your judgment. So looking at the overall impact of environmental changes and how it has changed Australian fauna and flora. Whereas for an explain question, explain is cause and effect. So in that response, you would show what caused the change and then how that affected the flora and fauna. But since this is an evaluate, you need to provide reasons in a sense. Now we've got that down, the next thing I like to do is essentially a mini mind map above the question. Since we know this is the area of the syllabus that everything is specifically coming from, though the highlighted yellow bit, I like to put that in on top of my question. So I have a plan essentially of how I'm going to answer it. So shut that down there. So Australian flora and fauna. It's good to have examples of each and we can take that directly from our syllabus. So our flora example would be sclerophyll plants and then our fauna example, so our animals, these small mammals and plants, they both evolved from the extinct species of the megafauna. Now I know that I need to include these three key things into my response. The next step is to look at the number of marks allocated to the question. So if we flip over to the left hand side, we can see that this question is worth four marks. Just highlight that over there. Four marks is a high amount of marks for a preliminary exam. So this one is more an extended style question. Also, another giveaway that tells us it's a more higher order and higher thinking question is the verb. So evaluate is normally seen in more harder extended style questions as well. So with the marks, what we can do is to break it down into a marking plan essentially. So what this is, it's where we break down each individual mark and in our head plan what one mark is given towards. Yes, this is done on like the teacher's copy and their marking criteria, but by having your own marking plan before you go into answering the question, you'll be able to see and allocate different sentences of your response to each mark that you'll obtain. So with the marking plan, I'll just do it on the question paper. So since it's four marks, two marks, I would allocate towards explaining the evolutionary change evolution so um evolution plus the environmental change so those of you who are familiar with the content would have known that australia previously was a wet climate that was cold and was abundant with rainforests so this is very different to the hot arid 
and dry Australia we have today. So there's drastic differences in between these two climates. So there's, it explains the reason as to why there was the extinction of the megafauna species and the evolution and introduction of essentially these sclerophyll plants and small mammals that evolved from the previous species. So two marks would go to explaining this. In our response, we need to explain why Australia went from a wet, cold, rainforest abundant climate to the hot, arid, dry climate we know today. So from class, you guys should know that previously Australia was closer to Antarctica. And then this would prove reason as to why we had a colder climate than the one we have today, since Australia is closer to the equator nowadays. Since we're closer to the equator and not the South Pole, we get more sunlight, hence we've got a hotter climate. So that's the reason as to why the climate changed. So we need to tie this reason into the evolution. Well, evolution is basically the change. Change of species over time. So different characteristics that evolve due to selection pressures, environmental change, ETC for animals. So specifically, we're looking at the sclerophyll plants and small mammals, which evolved from our megafauna. So evolution of our megafauna. So megafauna is a term that encompasses both the flora and fauna. So for example, we had animals such as the diprotodon and then we had larger plants with larger leaves. Yes, we can see um, those still in Australia. So for example, we've got the wallamai pine, but we do have more sclerophyll plants, which are the shorter, shorter leaved, waxier cuticle ones that are more evolved to suit the Australian hot, arid, dry climate we have today. But these are examples of megafauna. So though the diprotodon is extinct, we've still got wallamai pine around. So this top information will be summarized down into a couple of sentences for two marks out of the four. The remaining two marks, I would break this up. So one mark, I would put towards explaining the flora. So for example, the one we're specifically looking at is our sclerophyll plants. Sclerophyll plants. So these guys, I would just say why these guys are better suited to the hot, arid climate of Australia today. They've got harder leaves, deeper root systems, better water access, elaborating onto that, and how these guys are more suited to the environment we have today, hence the evolution. Because remember, evolution is a change of characteristics over time due to environmental pressures. So that would be one mark. The other mark would go towards explaining our fauna. So um, that would be the evolution of our small mammals. So previously we had the large mammals, aka megafauna, example we've got above here is diprotodon. These guys, they weren't um, from class, you know, that the large mammals weren't able to sustain themselves in the hotter climate due to the thing known as the surface area to volume ratio. So we know it's better to be smaller build in a hotter climate because that way you'll be able to dissipate easier and you won't be holding on to heat. So smaller mammals are more adapted to a hot climate. So that'd be explaining how these guys are more suitable to the environmental changes that have occurred. Now that we've broken down the four marks of this question into our little mini marking plan, we can start getting into writing our response. So it's essentially just translating these guys, the two mark, one mark, one mark, into full sentences that we can use. So Using this information that's written down, it can be transmitted across. Just when writing our response, we need to keep in mind the verb. So we've covered that previously. It's the judgment. So we need to be providing a judgment continuously and at the beginning of our response. So how I did my judgments, I would either say either it's had a high slash significant impact, for example, because... We want to talk about the environmental changes and the impact. And I would say that there has been significant impact environmentally on the evolution as we don't have the megafauna from previously in our um, modern day ecosystem. So this, there has been significant impact. So I would start off my response by saying 
there has been the impact of environmental change has been significant for the evolution of these Australian flora and fauna. Say that, get into my explanation of why, what type of environmental changes there were, and then I'd get into my examples, which we've covered down the bottom here. After I've mentioned each example, I'd then say, therefore, significant environmental impact. And then I do the same thing down here when I've written about the fauna as well. It's really important to have your judgment continuously throughout your response. Yes, you have to begin with it, but the marker also wants to see it continuously reinforced throughout your response because you can't just get away with writing it at the beginning. You want to show evidence and reasons and link it back to your question always. So a lot of people get caught up with not linking it back to the question. So it's really, really important that you guys don't forget about that. So you want to give your link to the question here, here, and towards the beginning. Let's have a look at the sample answer to see if we were able to cover what it was asking us for. So you can see over here, question nine. So one mark was allocated to saying Australia became hotter and drier as it drifted north. So we can see that towards here. So we have mentioned that Australia closer to Antarctica moved north. We've got that. So we'd get a mark for that. So we've got that mark. Rainforests that once covered Australia dried out and now only occur along coastal regions. Sea fern Glossopyrotris ex existed throughout Australia but is now extinct. So this is showing extinction of some megafauna that were there previously and it's talking about the Australian climate nowadays. So here we've talked about the Diprotodon in our example and we've mentioned how there are no rainforests anymore in the hot dry climate. So we've got that. Next one, so it's talking about megafauna died out. So current fauna are smaller versions of the megafauna. So in a way, we've covered that with talking about our small animals. And we've gone more into depth about saying the reason why these small mammals were better adapted. So we've got that. And then over here, they've said megafauna died as a loss of vegetation habitat or had small surface area volume ratio to adapt to the hotter conditions. So We've given evidence for adaptations over here and here. So we've covered that. In a sense, this question, it only covered Australian fauna, but we've also looked at the flora with our sclerophyll plants. So one tip to remember with your sample answers, yes, they're good as a simple guideline, but don't take it as your be all end all essentially to get the band six and the higher marks you want to go above and beyond what the sample response has given you because this is just your baseline so we've done that by giving a flora example and fauna example so breaking it down and that concludes the step-by-step -step process i would take to go through a short answer or extended response question in an exam keep those key factors in mind so just going through those again number one locate where the question is from in the syllabus Really important to be, become familiar with the syllabus because it really is handy in your exams. It's number one. Number two, it's really important to look at the verb of the questions. Key verbs, if you are not familiar with your verbs, really important to go there and then learn the definitions of your verbs so you can jot that down above. Next step is doing a mind map. So we've got a little plan of action before going into the question and it gives us a couple of key words to include into our response. And then step number four was breaking the question's marks down into a marking plan. This can be either in your head or at the top of the questions. This way, by following these four steps, you have a step-by-step -step approach to all your exam style questions for biology and for any other subject as well. Good luck and happy studying everyone.